don't have someone at 35 doesn't mean you keep going to 60 and 70 mm. again going to extremes i'm 53 just because, that's not extreme no but you keep mentioning 60 talking to your 70, mic talking to your mic you keep yeah. mentioning 60 70 that's extreme from 35 but that's, i'm 53 you don't, you don't go from you haven't mentioned okay a woman at 40 but you're, you're jumping you're jumping years that's what i'm saying i'm saying just because my point is to begin with just because you're 35 and you're single doesn't mean you'll be single at 40 at 60 at 70 well, but the problem is at 35 you've lost all the things that men value that that's the problem because men men value femininity fertility and they value youth so you can't say you're youthful when you're almost halfway through your life like <laughs> you can't say you're fertile when you're 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 about to have geriatric pregnancy so it's like and you look worse than you did at at 25 right so the way you're thinking is like a woman okay <laughs> i don't know um to each their own and everyone ha has the opportunity and right to have an opinion but I, 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 <laughs> what can I say about this very adamant perspective that is so flawed for the life that I have lived and for the life of a lot of people who are enjoying meaningful relationships that don't give two shakes about those three boxes, or at least not in the way that she's talking about. First thing, does anyone smell arrogance? I smell a sense of arrogance from this interviewer. Um, Maybe it's just me. The other thing, um, I'm thinking that this interviewer is younger than 35. What do you think? That's what I think. Also, I'm thinking that this interviewer has very little experience with men. That the idea of woman and femininity and appeal and partnership and life partner comes from more of an idea of things as opposed to a lived experience. And what I find truly interesting or what makes me think that more than anything is how little respect she has for um, for men. And the idea that there are men out there who don't subscribe or fall into this very narrow box that she has painted men in. But more importantly, a very narrow box that she's painted women in because through her narrative, the only thing that is important is whether or not a man is choosing you, whether or not you happen to check off the three boxes that are most important to a man. And then she names these boxes as femininity, fertility, and youthfulness. Those three preferences seem a bit shallow to me. They seem a bit shallow because femininity is in the eye of the beholder. Fertility, it matters if you are ready to settle down and have a family, but there's a lot of people who are choosing to not have children. There are a lot of people who want to adopt. So the idea that fertility would be chosen over love and connection, it just doesn't make sense to me. But then that's me. And the youthfulness, well, <laughs> if you are attracted to a man who is attracted to youth, run the other way because as soon as your youthfulness fades just like his is going to fade, 
then your value to him has faded. And a man who values a person based upon purely their externals is a person who isn't connected to themselves. Well, I'll tell you that if you can sit with a man and have that man feel safe and heard and valued, then those three boxes might not be at the top of the list. And if as a woman, you buy into this young person's narrative, this young person's perspective, then you leave your dream and your man, the man that isn't in the box that she has placed all men, you leave your man without his woman. Don't pay attention to somebody else's idea of how you live your life. In a universe as big as this, when there are all kinds of people and needs and reasons for connection. You dream your dream. You dare to believe that 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 is in your heart is possible. And then you let your vision, write it in your journal, let yourself feel what it, what it feels like to be connected to a man that you value and who values you, in fact, write on a piece of paper or in your journal the relationship that you are after. How do you want to connect? What are the gifts of humanness and safety and connection that you are bringing to the table and that you want to offer to another human being and receive as well. Get clear about the kind of relationship you want and then scroll past narratives like this. And anytime I experience someone making universal statements when it's clearly a personal point of view. And how do I know that it's a personal point of view, even if there are a lot of men who fall into this category? Not every man does. And if not every man does, then it's not universal. It's personal. And the men that she is so certain are after, you know, the femininity, the... Uh, youthfulness and the fertility, I'm sure she is going to run into a lot of men who work from those boxes. And I am certain that a conversation with this young lady when she is 40 will be quite different from the narrative that she is sharing right now. We can't let anybody live our lives, which means we have to own our narrative. We have to decide what is true for us. And if a thousand people are saying one thing and your heart tells you something else is possible, go with your heart. Go with your heart. All right, I'm loving you. Ooh, scroll on, scroll to on. To our inner fitness community, I invite you to stay, join, and learn to turn wellness concepts into action. Living like well takes practice, y'all. So simply click the subscribe button to practice together, grow this conversation, and change the world. I can't wait to read your comments and hear how your life changes for the better. Thank you for subscribing. Let's thrive.